Hello friends, Amy R here with Prairie Paper and Ink with more Distress Reinker watercoloring. This time super, super simple. I started with this Spring Blooms background stamp from Simon's Stamp. This one just came out in their Born to Sparkle release. Yeah. So I've got it face up on my desk. I have a couple pieces of Canson XL watercolor paper that I used my anti-static powder tool on. And then I'm inking the stamp up with clear embossing ink. And then I'm going to bring the paper to the stamp, press it with my fingers. If you want a better impression, you know, more, because like there'll be little bits and areas because this is textured watercolor paper, um, you can use like a misty, etc. I wasn't too concerned about it because I kind of like the non-perfection. I've been talking about that more in videos. It takes a while though. It does. We were all like, I don't know, brainwashed to believe that everything needs to be perfect. You know, the colors have to be exact. Everything has to be lined up perfectly. <laughs> takes a lot of years to get out of that. But anywho, I did it twice because why not? Especially when doing like things like this where there's backgrounds and no matter what, even though I'm doing multiples, they're always going to turn out slightly different from each other. So after I would ink up the watercolor paper. I'm using Hero Arts White Satin Pearl Embossing Powder. Such a beautiful embossing powder. I always forget I have it. I need to get more and put it in one of my containers like my other most used, you know, white and clear, etc. Because this one is just pretty. There's not a lot, like it's not, even though it says White Satin Pearl, I had someone contact me once and they're like, it is not white. <laughs> like it's more transparent and it is, it's more transparent, but it has just this nice satin, reflectiveness to it. It's not glittery. It's just really pretty. So anywho, I used that. You could use clear, you could use white. Heck, gold would look really nice too. Anyway, <laughs> after I had them stamped, I used my heat tool, made sure everything was melted. This would all, honestly, this embossed powder is one, like you could leave it as this because it's just like that, that shimmery reflect. It's very kind of elegant looking, but I'm going to add color because obviously so I have my palette that I've been using in all of my recent videos with just blobs of Distress Ink re -inker in them. I'm going to add a couple more colors because I wanted some Squeeze Lemonade, which is just the perfect bright yellow. Some Picked Raspberry, which is the perfect pink love. And a bit of Seedless Preserves, which is Seedless Preserves and Picked Raspberry just go together so nicely. And then I have um, all sorts of other random colors. I'll have links to like all the colors that are kind of in the palette. like. I added cracked pistachio. I have salvage patina. I use some carved pumpkin with this as well. Some rustic wilderness actually makes it in here. But all I do is get the watercolor paper wet with clean water. And then I just pick up these bits of distress re and paint them on. And that's it. Super simple. Doesn't take long at all. I keep, um, I kind of did somewhat rainbow order-ish. Like the, I, my idea is rainbow but I'm not going in exact rainbow. I'm kind of being a little random, but I'm keeping some of the colors separate. Like I'm not putting pink and green right next to each other because they'll make a browny grayish mud color. And you know, so I've got the pink and yellow and orange together. The, the blues go into a bit of a purple into pink, you know, and off camera before it dried, I went back in and added a little bit more of the color, a little less water, just to intensify it a bit, but that's it. It's really simple. You could do the same sort of thing without, um, doesn't have to be distress rankers. I've done videos like this using like just my distress inks, smushing them, watercolors work, anything like that. Um, if you don't have any of that, you could also just do ink blending because the heat embossing will resist the inks, whatever floats your boat. This is just fun because with the water and the distress inks reacting with it and mixing together, it just creates you know, their own sort of a thing. And it always looks like a hot mess when everything's wet. Always set it aside, let it dry, and then come back to it if you're like, oh, what did I do? <laughs> Trust me, it always looks better when it's dry. So that's what I did. I set those aside and let them just air dry to do their own thing. And while those were drying, I'm going to work on my sentiments. I pulled out the swoopy thank you wafer dye from CZ Design. And this part right here in the video is real time. I edit my videos. I get a lot of comments about that sometimes and you know, compliments from people like, I wish I could make cards as fast as you. I wish I could color as fast as you. I don't color or make anything fast at all. 
sometimes things just come together quickly, but I don't move as fast as it looks in my videos. That's just editing and the magic of editing. I speed things up so that we're not sitting here all day. I don't have time for it. You guys don't have time for it, but sometimes I'll show real time just to, you know, this is real time. This is how long it takes me to stack sentiments. That's what I'm doing. So I die cut um, white cardstock and then I die cut uh, tonic gold satin pearl, which I've raved about in a million videos because it's my absolute favorite gold cardstock. It's not super reflective. It has that like satin finish and I just oh, love. So I'm doing two layers of white cardstock and then the top layer will be the gold satin pearl. And I'm just using little dots of craft hacky glue. And here it is sped up. This is about the normal speed I show you guys. This is 400% faster. I wish sometimes I could do things this quickly. I wish I could do everything this quickly. I could have my house cleaned in like 20 minutes. Anyway, <laughs> I just stack two layers of the white cardstock together and then the top layer with that gold satin pearl. And I'll do this twice for both cards. And then the outline for these wafer dies, I die cut from Simon's vellum. I just wanted something to ground the letters and it will just slightly enhance the sentiment. But also my thing was I wanted to be able to see through the vellum so you can see the pretty color in the background. And I find this vellum is perfect for that. It's not too thick, so it doesn't obscure anything. And yet it just, it gives that little extra something. So same thing, very light little dabs of my craft tacky glue. I don't use very much, just basically tiny little dots. I'm not really squeezing the tube very much. And especially when adhering onto the vellum because adhesive really shows on vellum. And then I set those aside and my companion sentiments are the reverse sentiment, reverse gratitude sentiment strips. And I'm just trimming these down with my guillotine trimmer. So I chose a sentiment I'm gonna use on the outside of the cards and then a couple sentiments I'm gonna use on the inside of the cards. So as always, just kind of eyeballing it, using my guillotine trimmer, trimming them down. Um, you could also use, you know, the little sentiment label wafer dies, things like that. I just usually find that, I, and I've mentioned this, I, my eyeballing capabilities are like just horrible, but with my trimmer, I'm, I'm decent still. <laughs> I'm sure that's gonna go on me too and I'll have to like, just the only use wafer dies for things like that. But anyway, I trim them down. And then the sentiments I'm using on the front of the card, I use my Memento Tuxedo Black Marker and just the side of the brush tip to just quickly go over the edges of those um, sentiments just to cover that little like white cardstock that's exposed. The other ones I left because they're going to be adhered on the inside of the card, so you won't notice it as much. And then the backgrounds, they're completely dry. So I just die cut them with a rectangle wafer die just to make them a little smaller. And then to adhere these thank you sentiments, it's the same method as stacking them. I'm just using tiny little dabs of glue directly behind the words on this vellum so that you won't see any of that adhesive. So just going along with those tiny little dots. Again, not squeezing a bunch, not adding much. It doesn't take much because they're light, it's paper. A little bit of glue will do ya. So adhere those into place right onto these backgrounds. And again, once it's pressed down, you can see, you can still see all the color and the heat embossing of the um, Spring Blooms background through that vellum. And then to adhere these little sentiment strips, I just used a little, one of my little Darice foam strips. Just trim that down. And then I'm gonna adhere that right onto the card front right below the thank you. So it'll say, thank you for supporting me, which applies to all of you guys. Thank you cards are my favorite cards to make because it's just, you know, a general thank you, like I always say, and then also to send to people that do support me. So all that fun stuff. So adhered the sentiment strips into place, and I'm going to set these aside again to work on my card bases, which is Simon's heavyweight white cardstock. I'm going to mask off right at the fold of the card base with just some masking paper or masking tape. I'm gonna apply that right at the fold and I'm gonna use the Spring Blooms background again, this time with Simon's Fog ink, one of my favorite, just light gray, perfect neutral inks. So I inked up the stamp with that and then brought the inside of the card base to the stamp. This time I did use some copy paper to keep the ink from getting on my hands. I didn't wanna smear it all over the back of the card, etc. 
and then just remove the masking tape, put it on the fold of the second card base, and then bring that, ink up the stamp, bring the card base to the stamp, cover it with the copy paper, and then just rub it really well with my hands. So then the inside of the card has the same pattern, just in a nice light neutral gray. And then I'll remove the masking tape, clean off my stamp later, you know, and then fold the cards. They were already scored, so I knew where the score line was to do the masking, but then actually fold the cards um, with my Teflon bone folder. And then I'm gonna adhere those two little sentiment strips to the inside of each of these cards with more craft tacky glue. And the inside just says, you are so kind, I am so grateful. So adhered those into place. And then to adhere the card fronts to the card bases, um, you could have to use foam tape. Like my last video, I used Simon's Big Mama foam tape, that works. I still have, like, I have this little stack of um, pieces of cardstock that I've cut from cardstock that I don't like using. Like, I don't like it for coloring. I don't like it for ink blending. It just, it's just, I consider it just like crap cardstock. <laughs> but I'm not going to throw it out. It works perfectly for things like this for layering, you know, because nobody's going to see it. I don't have to ink blend on it, etc. You know, I'm not going to fight with it. So that's what I use it for. I just cut it down and use it for dimension. So that's what I did here. I just adhered a couple layers together and then adhered it to the card fronts and then adhered that to my card base. So that's one way of getting around like not using foam tape, but FYI, adding like, more layers of like heavyweight cardstock, etc., will make your cards heavier. So it's just up to personal preference. I don't mind paying extra postage if it does end up making my cards heavier, you know, than the first rate of stamps or whatever, but whatever floats your boat. Um, the, also the benefit though too, is because I'm using the liquid glue, you have that wiggle room that I've talked about. You can also use the liquid glue over the foam tape to give the wiggle room. Wiggle room is life, <laughs> especially when you're like me and you're getting older and the astigmatism and things aren't lining up. It's like, I need wiggle room with all the things anyway. Got those adhered. And then my final little embellishment is this uh, gold satin baubles. I've mentioned this before. These are very similar to the gold satin pearl cardstock. So I just, I love them. I've already gone through, I think a good half a container of these. I use them so much, I love them. So I adhere those into place, which is dabs of craft tacky glue. And then I'm gonna pair these cards with some lemon chiffon envelopes just to bring out that yellow because the yellow just made me happy. And that was it. So as always, there will be a link below the video to my blog post. I'll have picture links in my blog post. I'll have all the supplies, everything. Check out the description box below the video if you are interested. And like I said earlier, thank you all so very much for watching, for subscribing, for thumbs upping, for commenting, all of it. I very much appreciate it and stay tuned for the next video because I'll be back very soon. Bye.